Hello, welcome once again to my pen reviews. Over here I have a pretty chunky pen, the Moonman M1000. It's made of wood. Not sure exactly what wood this is. I just chose from three available colors. Olive wood, which is lighter than this. This wood, I think it's peach wood. And ebony wood, which is of course a beautiful dark color. So let's first go on to the aesthetics of this pen. It's a metal clip. It has this kind of etching patterns on the top of the cap, as well as the bottom of the barrel. Over here, on the cap ring, you can see it says Moonman. And it says Moonman on the other end as well. Just the words Moonman repeated a few times. And so, at the top of this pen is a very opalescent, pearl-like fitting. Not exactly sure what material it is. I have a feeling it could be a special type of resin. But it gives the pen a really wonderful look. And another, th another thing you will notice is that on the wood, there are small rivets forming a pattern over here and also on the body as well. So actually I did a bit of research and I found that this Moonman 1000 is actually a homage or tribute, I wouldn't say copy because it's not identical, to a Mont Blanc special edition pen. So I feel that this pen gets a bit too little love on the internet because it really is a beautiful pen. I think that there could be a bit of bias in peop some people's reviews when they complain about it being too big or too heavy because if it was a Mont Blanc pen, I'm sure no one would be complaining. But because this is a cheaper Chinese pen, people tend to become more judgmental, I would say, more critical in their assessments. So it has a Number six, steel buck nib installed. So it's a very well writing nib as expected from the German manufacturers. The stainless steel grip section. On it fits a cartridge or a converter. It's the same converters that go on the Kako H and pens that use Bock or Schmidt nibs. So not exactly Standard International, because there is this additional step which allows you to grip onto it, which is not found in some Chinese Standard International converters. And so we see this body of the pen, mostly wood with steel top, steel bottom, to balance off the weight a little. The feet is very well constructed, not easily broken or put out of shape, which is the problem I had with some twist bee nips. The fins tend to become dislocated if I pull too hard at it. Alright, so in the hand, it does feel a bit back heavy because of the stainless steel end cap, I presume, as well as the heaviness of this natural wood, but it's not unpleasant, actually. I think it's a very beautiful pen. Some people call it a bit uh, too fanciful, but I think it's rather good looking. It's definitely an eye-catching piece, probably not the everyday carry due to its weight, but if you put it at your desk, just like that, it definitely can draw some attention and makes you look quite a professional writer. I'm not sure what word to use to describe it, or maybe it has even a magical quality to it. I can see this being featured in a Harry Potter movie or something. Right? There's a little bit of a mystical feel to the wood and the reverse, a bit of a bohemian look to it which is very nice and 
Another thing I realized is very well made is that there are these two rings on the pen cap that are actually matte finish steel, which gives a beautiful contrast to the very polished stainless steel look of the rest of the pen. So actually, I appreciate all these small details, even the riveting, which some people dislike. And let's give it a right. Alright, I shall zoom in onto my Rivadia pad, take this wooden box away, and let's see how it writes. It's a Moon Man. M1000. Okay, I shall zoom in a bit more. A bit of flex in the number 6. Steel box nib. If you have been in the fountain pen scene for a while, you probably know how this writes. There's no need to go into much detail about it. It's a nail, so not much line variation. This is as much as I could get without going too far. I don't want to spoil the nib. But extremely smooth, wonderful make as expected from Bock, a very renowned German nib manufacturer. So what I like about this pen Definitely it looks, it looks a whimsical, a bit fantasy look, and I like its girth. Some people may say it is too wide or too, basically too big for the liking, but I like it. It's a chunky, a chunky pen, but it's Fits well in my hand. I prefer large pens. And of course, I get a number 6 bog nib for under $50, which will probably be around USD 40, I would presume. Or maybe even less than that. So it writes very well. What I do not like. Well, it is not really everyday carry, an everyday carry pen because of its size and its weight. But I wouldn't want to carry it around me anyways, given that it's so beautiful, I don't wish to damage it. Mm, there could be some people who do not like its similarity to the Mont Blanc. It's a Mont Blanc Special Edition. Some people may find it a bit of a ripoff. Although personally, I'm not too bothered by it, as long as it's not a direct copy. You don't see the Mont Blanc logo here. And we do see it being proudly stated to be a Moon Man pen. So I'm fine with that. I only dislike pens that are imitations. But this is not, not a fake. Not a fake, just a, a design which is inspired heavily, I would say, by this Mont Blanc Special Edition pen. I will probably put a link to a picture of the Mont Blanc pen in the description of this video. So to be honest, there's nothing much I dislike about this pen. It's really beautiful. It sits well in my hand. If I could zoom out to show how it sits in the, on my hand and my wrist, it sits very well. Because it rests on the nook of my hand, I don't feel the weight that much, and it feels very well to write with. So in conclusion, Moonman M1000, if you like its look, it's worth a buy. You can get it at pretty reasonable prices on AliExpress, where you can find a plethora of other beautiful Chinese pens. So that's all. And goodbye.